Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Ashiana Housing Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Binay Sharda from ENY LLP. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Seema. Welcome everyone and thanks for joining this Q4 FY24 earnings call for Ashiana Housing Limited. The results and the investor presentation have been mailed to you and it is also available on the stock exchange. In case if you have not received the same, please write to us and we'll be happy to send it over to you. To take us through the results for this quarter and answer your questions, we have today with us Mr. Barun Gupta, full time director and Mr. Vikas Dugar, CFO. We will be starting the call with a brief overview of the company's performance of this quarter, and then we'll follow it up with Q&A session. I would like to remind you that everything said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future, which may be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with uncertainties and risks that they face. These uncertainties and risks are included, but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI and subsequent annual reports, which you'll find on our website. With that said, I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Bikas Dugar. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vinay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope all of you and your families are keeping healthy. I welcome you to discuss the performance of the fourth quarter and the year ended uh, March 24 for Ashan Housing. Thank you for joining us today. On operations, this year saw the launch of 10 projects, 4 greenfield projects, and 6 new phases of existing projects to the tune of 23.19 lakh square foot. Ashana Amara, the uh, second uh, kids centric project in Gurugram, which was launched in October 22 last year, launches two new phases in April 23 and March 24 respectively. Both of them were fully booked on launch. A senior living project was launched in Talegao, Pune by the name Ashana Amod in July 23. And another senior living project was launched in Chennai named Ashana Vatsalya in March 24. Two new projects launched in Jaipur, Ashana Nitara and 144, both in premium housing segment. Other projects where new phases were launched included Phase 2 of Ashana Prakriti Jamshedpur, Phase 5 of Ashana Shubham Chennai, Phase 5 of Ashana Tarang Bhivari, and Phase 2 of Ashana Malar Pune. We achieved a sales value of Rs. 1,798.22 crores for the financial year 2023-24, which is highest ever. The same was Rs. 1,313.43 crores in FY23. Sales price improved to rupees 6811 for the year on a per square foot basis, vis-a-vis 5080 per square foot in the previous year, an increase of 34% on a year-on-year -year basis. This was driven by increasing prices across projects and also changing mix towards higher priced projects. In the last quarter, 10.6 lakh square foot of area was booked compared to 3.35 lakh square foot in Q3 FY24. In Q4, bookings were driven by Yashana Amara Phase 3, 144 in Jaipur and Vatsalya in Chennai. We handed over 24.78 lakh square feet in FY24 vis-a-vis 10.51 lakh square feet in FY23. Total revenue more than doubled to Rs. 966.52 crores in FY24 versus Rs. 425.19 crore in FY23 due to higher deliveries and also due to mix towards higher price projects. Total comprehensive income, that is TCI, also recorded at 84.24 crores in FY24 versus 28.78 crores in FY23. Handovers during there included Jaipur Ashana Ducks, Phase 2 and 3, Amantran Phase 1 and 2, and Umang Phase 5, all in Jaipur. Phase 3 of Tarang and Nirmai Phase 4 in Vivadi, Aditya Phase 1 and 2 in Jamshedpur, and Dwarka Phase 4 in Jodhpur. For the last quarter, the total revenue reported was 296.96 crores, vis-a-vis 189.25 crores in the previous quarter. TCI declined to Rs. 17.45 crore vis-a-vis 28.08 crores in the previous quarter. 
during there we recorded pre tax operating cash flows of 304.46 crore which was the highest ever equivalent area constructed was 20.68 lakh square foot in fy24 which is 16.73 lakh square foot in fy23 quarterly equivalent area constructed was at 6.97 lakh square foot versus 4.77 lakh square foot in the previous quarter and the same was 5.08 lakh square foot in 24 fy23 in fy24 we successfully completed our maiden buyback of rupees 55 crores on this note i would like to conclude my remarks we will now be happy to discuss any questions or suggestions that you may have Binay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can we take up the questions, please? Sure, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take a first question. from the line of lavanya sharma an individual investor please go ahead hello hi lavanya yeah hi hi everybody uh, first of all congratulations uh, on the great numbers uh, everything looks uh, really good and positive uh, i have two questions can you just shed some light on the decreased margin that is one and the second thing is uh, last year you performed a uh, buyback and this year you uh, you've announced dividend so why are you not going for buyback option again thank you so lavanya uh, two things uh, the buyback options are expensive to execute if an amount is small because there are a lot of fixed cost involved in the buyback uh, so from a distribution perspective buybacks make sense when we are willing to distribute a larger amount of cash Uh, at this point of time, we would like to have some more cash uh, uh, with the company as uh, uh, we are looking at a uh, few more acquisitions going forward, and we would like to have that flexibility. So the amount of dividend with uh, dividend was given at that uh, quantum of mark. Uh, buybacks will not happen every year. Uh, we hope uh, that we do buybacks every three to five years, depending on the cash flow availability of the company. and now the first question of uh, margins uh, uh this is with respect to the i'm getting the quarterly margins and not the annual margins because the annual margins uh, as compared to last year are uh, uh, very similar so uh, in terms of, or actually better uh, in terms of quarterly margins or margins vary depending on which project is uh, getting delivered so let's say in q3 we had very healthy margins because we had the delivery of ashana nirme a senior living project in bivari which is enjoyed good margins historical land cost uh, premium pricing for senior, senior living as compared to uh, uh, this this year's delivery we had at this quarter a large quantum of delivery came from ashana aditya in jamshedpur and uh, a little bit from uh, Ashana Dwarka in uh, Jodhpur, if I am correct. Ashana Aditya and Ashana Amantra. Uh, all three of them are joint venture projects, so they have they have done well on return on capital employed. Uh, but our margins are relatively less uh, there because uh, you know uh, the land costs are heavier, and also in in Aditya and Amantra we had cost overruns a little bit uh, more than expected. So so uh, these things. Uh, as uh, there will be variation in uh, uh, quarter uh, quarter and quarter uh, uh, 
margins uh, in our company because our different projects enjoy different margins. Uh, so I would urge to look at uh, annual margins rather than quarterly numbers for us. So they will be very uh, non-representative as a number. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Lavan. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Rohit from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Hello? Yes, yeah, I am audible. audible. Please go ahead. Yes. So I have three questions. Uh, so one is, uh, if I go to your uh, slide number uh, 17, you've given the year-wise delivery for FY25, 26, and 27. Uh, so I just want to understand, I mean, uh, you talked in the past that some of the older projects, the margins were not that great. So, can you talk about in these three years how the margins would shape up and some of these projects are new as well? So, how do you see uh, the margins say, for, the, for the deliveries that are there for the next three years? As you, as you see right now, I mean, obviously things can change. But... So, we see margin expansion. I don't, uh, I don't think we have exact numbers. We are going to uh, we plot them uh, as we go forward. Uh, but uh, like last last year, uh, you know, we have been on a pat margin has been uh, at about nine uh, percent for last year, uh, if I'm correct. And we expect that margin to improve uh, in the next year and in the year after that. I think uh, as the cycle keeps going, we'll probably get to uh, after tax profit margins and the TCI margins are closer to 17, 18 uh, percent. Uh, gradually, as as we go ahead, so uh, this year's margin would be better than FI24. Uh, FI26 margin should be better than FI27, uh, FI25, and 27 should be better than 26. And this most of this is happening for two reasons: that gross profit margins are expanding, and uh, our revenues uh, uh, in let's say FI27 are. Uh, indirect costs as a percentage of revenues in 27 should be lower than uh, should be lower than uh, what it is in 24. In some years, like in 25, probably our uh, indirect expenses as a percentage might be a little higher than 24 because the revenue mix will not change uh, that much. Uh, but uh, but I see overall margin expansion uh, uh, to happen as we as we go forward. So, very helpful, uh, So the other question was uh, in terms of our uh, the the new land purchases, and we were we've been talking about looking at other geographies also, and also within the same geography, I think we bought something in Jaipur two couple of quarters back, or I think three, three quarters back, my memory serves right. So uh, how do you see that? Uh, because now as I as I see based on your presentation, we have about uh, 6 lakh square feet, so 60 lakh square feet, uh, so about 80 lakh square feet is the amount left for us, both with the, uh, and including the Milakpur land and, and uh, from the table that we mentioned. So as we sort of grow and as the cycle sort of continues uh, in our favor, so how are you thinking any, any sort of uh, broad target or thought process you can share? So, uh, I think Rohit, I don't, we don't have a broad target as to where we, what we will do exactly. What I think uh, we will be is uh, overall try to focus on returns on capital more and growth less. Uh, so we might have years that might be cyclically off and, and I think we as a management team have decided that we should be comfortable with those and take calculated risks where we see opportunities. Uh, at this moment of time, uh, my view is that uh, overall larger opportunities will come in the senior living space. Uh, it's a space where I see expansion. Uh, we have uh, some term sheets uh, 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 under uh, uh, negotiation and we hope to close some things. Uh, we are looking for more uh, parcels as well in elsewhere. 
But I think overall, I think senior living will play a larger mix as we go forward because we see that business uh, relatively less competitive. So we enjoy, continue to enjoy some uh, differentiation and uh, therefore some uh, better margins and returns uh, because we can make some off-location lines work uh, in senior living. Uh, outside of that, we will be looking at uh, how do we just keep things chugging along and wait for opportunities we, till we do something bigger. Uh, we have uh, given the current kind of pipe and the kind of pricing we see, we seem to, you know, we seem, we will continue to enjoy very good cash flows and profits from the existing stock more than we thought uh, we would. And we would like to enjoy the upcycle like that and make sure that we have our heads on uh, focus on returns uh, on capital more and uh, and be patient if we have to be in this. So, so you talked about 15% ROE as a target. So probably this year you you hit that number. We are, I mean, we are already hitting in double, early double this year. So. Uh, so may not be this year, uh, and I think it's because these deliveries get a little lumpy. So reported ROE is uh, becoming a little bit challenging. Like 26, we will definitely hit 15% uh, uh, over ROEs if things go as per plan, as per deliveries. Uh, but uh, internally, we have created a, a matrix more around uh, uh, economic ROE. Uh, this year we uh, crossed the 15% threshold in the company uh, from an uh, economic ROE perspective uh, in FI24. And uh, it's a 12 to 24 month lag. Uh, so if not this year, then next year we should hit it. But again, uh, deliveries can be very lumpy and therefore uh, we, we tend to keep a track on economic ROE internally better. And uh, we are well beyond 15% now internally. And it will reflect in the numbers sooner than later in the report. And last question is in terms of key sales for FY25. Anything you can share? What are you thinking? Uh, Say that again, please. So I was just asking for pre sales for FY25. Anything that you can share or any thoughts? Uh, last year was close to 1800. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this year we have a target of 2,000 crores uh, internally to uh, get to. Uh, again, uh, it's, uh, it uh, assumes that the market will remain uh, buoyant uh, the way it is and we'll get to launch the phases as uh, scheduled. It will continue to be heavily dependent on uh, Gurgaon as it contributes a large part of our uh, expected sale value uh, uh, right now. So, Can I ask one more question? Uh, yes. yes, go ahead, please. So, uh, I think in the last con few uh, interactions, you've talked about Bangalore uh, as well. So, any update or anything that uh, I think also we had posted something on LinkedIn about the same. So, I just wanted to uh, ask if you have any update or if you'd like to share. We, we, we have two term sheets in Bangalore for senior living. Uh, uh, and we are hoping to close uh, transactions there uh, on revenue share. Uh, so, but these things are, you know, 50% of the sheet flips somewhere or the other during diligence or something or the other. I'm hopeful that we close, uh, but they can flip through the cracks. But we are excited about doing some senior living in Bangalore. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All the very best for this year. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Reminding all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a reminder to all the participants. If you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your phone. Thank you. We we'll take the next question from the line of Mr. Kunal. Please go ahead. Hi, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, this is all. Congratulations on your Q4 2024 results. My question is specifically around uh, Gurgaon. So, as you can see, that your project is providing a significant premium in the Gurgaon geography. So, after the Ashana Amara launch for phases four and five, are there any specific plans to acquire land or start of any new projects in the coming financial year? So we have uh, Ashana Amara phase 4 and 5 uh, to launch. We are hoping to launch it in this financial year, both those phases. And we have Ashana, uh, another project in sector 8C in Gurgaon, which is uh, not too far away from uh, Ashana Amara. And uh, we are hoping that we can launch that in the fourth quarter of this year. And if not fourth quarter of this year, then the first quarter of the next year. Uh, so yeah, that we are. Uh, so those that project is under approvals. Uh, so we have uh, uh, gone ahead and applied for EC. We are uh, putting the rest of the approvals in as well. So I, I hope to launch that in this uh, financial year. Sure, sure, that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Kunal. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one. We we'll take the next question from the line of Rehan from Sikomoro Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Please go ahead. Hi, Rehan, you are audible. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Good uh, financial year of results. Uh, just wanted to ask about um, an update on um, the IFC project. Um, you know, where is that at right now? And like, what can we expect going forward? So on IFC, we have three projects on the first platform, which is Ashana Dutch, which is complete uh, uh, in terms of construction. And we have a few connections still left on the side end from a few customers and a, uh, and a few you know, last uh, expenses that have to be done, which uh, have to be uh, done, but more or less, it has to be complete, a little bit of, uh, uh, little bit of IC uh, capital is still left to be paid out. Other than that, uh, there are two projects that we have invested in, Ashana Amara and Ashana Batsalya. Both projects are launched under construction and uh, uh, and different phases which are updated in the investor updates for each project in terms of uh, how much we sold, how much we collected, how much we have constructed. So you can look at those uh, uh, from the investor updates specifically. On platform two, we are yet to deploy uh, any capital. Uh, we are actively engaging uh, with them and a few projects to see where we can deploy from platform two, uh, private where we have to be. Okay, sure. Um, and what is the land acquisition pipeline like? Um, I think you spoke about Bangalore, uh, but last quarter you also spoke about looking at uh, some land for a senior living project closer to Mumbai. So what's happening on that front? Okay, so we are looking in for We had a term sheet executed there. Unfortunately, that term sheet slips through. As I said, you know, these term sheets have a 50% failure rate. Unfortunately, the one year Mumbai uh, slipped. Uh, we have uh, more uh, 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 projects that we are providing offers on. Uh, I'm hoping that something will succeed there. Uh, we are excited about Panvel after the success that we have received in uh, Shana Amor. Uh, we have a uh, term sheet for executed for a land uh, in uh, Jamshedpur as well, and we are actively quoting in Jaipur and uh, Panvel uh, at the moment uh, for more projects. Okay, sure. Thanks a lot. That's all for me, and best of luck for the coming year. Thank you so much. Thank you. We request all the participants to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone.
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Himanshu Tugar from Safe Gains Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, great set of videos. Congratulations on that. Uh, my, I just had one query on the uh, you know, pace of construction going ahead. Uh, I think uh, this quarter really then phenomenally uh, touching almost uh, 7 lakh square feet of uh, equivalent area. Uh, now that you know uh, the land bank uh, acquisitions are kind of slowed down, uh, do you think you'll be able to maintain the same pace for the next uh, four or five quarters, or there is going to be some you know, slowdown, maybe go back to that four to five uh, till you once again come back to the time pace? Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected. The line for the management has got disconnected. We'll reconnect. Please stay. Thank you for patiently holding. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for the management reconnected. Himanshu, sir, I request you to please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi, I'm audible. Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, understand about the pace of construction going ahead. Uh, this quarter was like phenomenal. I think it was almost 7 lakh per feet. Uh, yes. Now that, you know, the pace of acquisition of the land bank has kind of slowed down. Uh, do you see the pace of construction also coming down in FY25 or you think that there are, you know, probably the pipeline should convert and you are optimistic of maintaining the same pace of 7 lakh or, you know, maybe something above 6 lakh square feet? So, quarterly numbers will vary for us, uh, Quarterly numbers vary a lot for the year, uh, like in the third quarter. We have sub, sub, uh, uh, NGT vans uh, in the NCR area, so construction slows down. In April, May, June, uh, because of election, workers have gone back, because of Eid and Holy workers have gone back. Uh, and that uh, uh, brings the quarter in, first quarter down a little bit. So quarterly variations, so I would not take quarterly run rates uh, because of the variations that we have. Uh, we do expect to do uh, 25 to 26 lakh square foot of construction uh, this year. And I don't see the pace slowing down because we will continue to launch projects uh, this year. And I think uh, uh, we have still headroom. So like out of 62 lakh square foot launch, we have done 28 lakh square foot of construction. So we have 34 lakh square foot of construction to do within the, uh, uh, the launched uh, pieces. And we have about 80, uh, 80, 90 lakh square foot to launch, about 90 lakh square foot to launch, excluding Milakpur. 
between our future phases and land bank. And as in when we uh, uh, add that, uh, uh, that will also come in. Uh, so I don't see uh, a declining uh, volume as of now, uh, at least for the next 12, uh, maybe 24 months. And maybe after 24 months, it might have a different scenario. Got it, got it. Thanks for that. I just one last question from me. Uh, around uh, the Chennai Swarang uh, project, so where you have the 50% of the profit. Now, in this, how do you maintain your ROE? Like, if you do your ballpark, like, what's the typical model here? Yeah, so we have uh, taken up, taken up, taken up, taken up 50 50 partnership with. Uh, our local uh, partners there in uh, Aryan Group, they have a 50% stake, we have a 50% stake, we share profit 50-50, we bought the land at uh, cost together, uh, we charge a fee that covers our administrative cost. So the ROE of the project is effectively our, our ROE on that project, ROC on the project. And uh, we see the project generating the, uh, the required returns, yeah? So it functions like as if any other outright project that we would have uh, acquired where we saw the returns. So it's basically dependent on whether we are able to get the land value at a price uh, where returns make sense. Got it. Uh, any comments around the cost of construction? Because the kind of pump this water was pretty high. So is, I, I understand the seasonality aspect here at this thing. But uh, is that some kind of increasing now in the cost of consumption, uh, construction? Uh, so our cost of construction will go up uh, for two reasons. Some there is inflation, but inflation is not in construction is not like more than regular inflation in the economy right now. We had that a couple of years ago. It's general. It's, you know, there would be a few percentage points here or there. Generally, it's not like uh, crazy shift. But uh, our projects, you know, as, as, as in when we have moved into higher price projects, uh, we have also moved into higher cost of construction projects. You know, we are making basements, we are going taller, we are using my van, we have upgraded specs, uh, we are doing better common areas. All of that uh, in, in, uh, increased cost of construction. So cost of construction will increase uh, uh, from that perspective. But as a percentage of sale price, uh, as I said, uh, we, we are going to see gross profit margin expansion. And I think as a percentage of sale price, construction cost to uh, come down. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ankit Shah from White Equity Investment Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, while bidding for land parcels, uh, what gross profit margins are we factoring in uh, based on the current sale prices? So based on current sale prices, current cost of construction, uh, we typically look for uh, about 27 to 30% on JV projects. Uh, and uh, if outright projects are there, then a commensurate uh, increase in this GP margin to cover the cost of uh, financing uh, in an outright structure. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, second is, uh, what would be uh, our expected uh, pre-sales mix for F25? Uh, we are looking at doing about 2,000 crores of uh, pre-sales in FI25. Uh, a mix, uh, what do you mean by mix? Uh, I mean uh, uh, split between, uh, let's say, uh, Gurgaon, Jaipur and others. At that number, I don't have. Uh, we make individual project targets in some, you know, some years, some places have a little bit more, some people a little bit less. But I said we expect Gurgaon to contribute the heavy share uh, this year as, as well, like last year it did. So that uh, that will continue. Uh, but as I articulated earlier, from a longer term perspective and further capital allocation, we believe 
Senior living is an important space where we will continue to allocate capital to and where we see from a long-term perspective larger revenue and profit contributions uh, coming. Got it. Got it. Uh, uh, one is, uh, see, uh, we are guiding for a pre-sales of uh, 2,000 crores for F25. Uh, Amra, both stages we are building in into F25, right? Hello. 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 Uh, Mr. Shah, uh, yeah. could you please uh, repeat your question, sir? Yes. Uh, so, uh, we we have given pre-sales guidance of 2,000 crores for F25. Uh, now, th does this include both phases of Ashiana Amara, uh, phase 4 and phase 5 launch? Yes, it includes launch of both phase 4 and 5 uh, of Ashiana Amara. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, X of Ashiana Amara, uh, the pre-sales number looks, uh, uh, I mean, pretty conservative. Uh, can you uh, kind of throw some light on that? Uh, that's a, a different perspective. They are, they are conservative by temperament, I guess you can say. Uh, uh, but, you know, we, 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 take the, we take a conservative view of the market uh, as of now. Okay, got it. Uh, uh, next one was, uh, are we facing any cost overruns in uh, any of our important projects as of now? I, I mean, noticeable cost overruns? No, we don't have noticeable cost overruns uh, in any of the projects. As I said, we expect uh, margins to improve going forward. Right. Uh, and the last one from my side, uh, uh, in, in case of Ashana Amara, uh, uh, we have IFC as a financial partner. So there, uh, can you share with us as to you know how the financials will play out between us and IFC? I mean, what could be the payout that we need to make to IFC uh, in that project? Sorry to interrupt you, sir. The line for the management is got disconnected. Please allow me a moment while I read. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management is reconnected. Ankit sir, please go ahead with your question. Yes. So, uh, in case of Ashana Amara, um, uh, we have IFC as a financial partner. So, can you share with us as to you know how the financials uh, will play out between us and IFC? I mean, what kind of a payout uh, do we have to make to IFC in, in, for this particular project? If you can share. Uh, uh, IFC, uh, so the A, I would urge you, it's a listed debenture. You can go through the uh, exact debenture to understand the exact financial structure. It's a little bit more complex just to, just to explain on the phone. But overall, effectively, uh, they have a share, a percentage share in the cash flows of the project. Uh, their percentage share in the cash flows of the project would be a little bit more than 30% in the net cash flows of the project. Uh, the net cash flows that come into the project would be more than, a little bit more than 30% uh, uh, of the project because uh, still a certain figure they have a higher share and then it becomes 30. And so overall uh, uh, payouts would be in that uh, ratio. They are, they are, yeah, so that's the financial structure. You can look at the departures. So depending on how well the project does, the payouts to them uh, move in tandem. So if the project does better, uh, 
uh, the absolute payouts to them improve if the project does uh, worse the absolute projects uh, absolute uh, payouts to them reduce got it got it that's it from my side thank you so much thank you thank you sir a reminder to the participants if you wish to ask a question you may press star and 1 on your phone the next question is from the line of anurag sharma from m3 investments please go ahead sir yeah thank you uh, my question is on senior living so uh, are we are we able to find or are we searching for newer locations for senior living from more than the existing locations i mean, I mean cities uh, rather than locations Okay. okay so uh yes uh, and no i would uh, just i'll give a little bit more nuanced answer to this so one new city in bangalore we are evaluating where we have no presence okay and then we are evaluating uh, so uh, additional options to the projects we have in ncr and in the bombay pune region so in the bombay pune region we have uh, uh, ashana amod uh, at uh, uh talega with services both bombay and pune but it's closer to pune and we are looking at something closer to mumbai similarly we have bhivari with services ncr it's on the western side of ncr and a little further away we are looking for more proximate lands to the center of uh, the city in uh, ncr so we are evaluating greater noida we are evaluating gurgaon so yeah they are they are different from where we are but they are servicing uh the same larger macro market if that's the way so we're looking at differentiated micro markets in the larger macro market of bombay pune and in ncr and then uh have term sheet signed for bangalore for new senior living projects okay okay and the second question is in terms of maturity of this concept uh, you know if you if you were to just think as to how where do you think the maturity is and uh, when can you really see a jacob in this uh, segment uh, based on your experience till now in the senior living again okay uh yeah it's very difficult to predict the jacob right uh, if i could predict the jacob then it was uh, uh, i wish i could do that uh, unfortunately i have no capability of predicting when the jacob will happen uh that said uh, i think we're still in the overall in still early stages of maturity that we have not hit the jacob yet we have not gotten into any sort of maturity in the market uh my overall view is that though we will uh, we are oh, we going to allocate a higher proportion of our capital to senior living going forward we we already have a higher proportion of capital allocated to senior living today than what we had 5 years ago and hopefully in 2 3 years that proportion will go up even more uh, as projects and we i expect to see things uh, change uh, uh, sooner rather than later but it's very difficult to say exactly when no sure so, i appreciate that yeah but just yeah, but maybe maybe time. Time. all right all right and maybe just the last related point so let's suppose 3 5 years out uh in terms of volumes uh where could the senior living lie in our portfolio uh, uh, right now we are looking at in, in from a median term view if we can get to about 900 to 1000 units a year from about 350 400 units a year today last year so we are so it's a percentages as we allocate we you know can we go about 2 to 1/2x in the next 3 to 4 years i think that's that's the that's the basic uh, expectations on unit terms uh, so uh, price expansion would should be over and over and above this so hopefully can can we make the business 3x in the next 4 to 5 years all right that's helpful thank you and all the best thank you Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Kunal, an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, Varun. Hi, Kunal. So my specific question um, is uh, from like related to Asia and Amara. So there is 9.1 million square feet of uh, saleable area which is still remaining there, phase four and five. And uh, based on the current prevailing rates for Ashana Phase Three, and on my analysis and discussions with the 
low cost then goes down. I mean, this year the loan fetch you around, according to my calculation, 1500 uh, crores for this coming financial year. With that, I think there's going to be 500 crores which is remaining in the 2000 crore projection which is gave. So, I mean, uh, why are we, like, is, is the 500 crores specifically coming from senior living? Uh, if, uh, yes, then what makes you so bullish on senior living as opposed to, let's suppose, kids centric homes? So, if you could just very quickly give us some pointers. Sir. So, two, two things. Kunal, uh, Amara, you expected that we sell out at launch. Uh, in phase four and five, we have done that in one, two, three. But what is history and what is future can be very different. So in our projections, we have not uh, estimated that we will get uh, 1500 crores from Omara. That's that's first. So and the sale price also we have nine lakh twenty thousand square foot. Uh, we sold phase three at eleven thousand six hundred something uh, a square foot. Uh, so even if we sell at that price point, the whole thing it will be thousand crores. Uh, I'm guessing you are expecting more like 15, 16,000 rupees a square foot and we are expecting to sell the whole thing. If we do that, we will definitely have a higher number than 2,000 crores. Uh, definitely. We are not uh, uh, looking at an overall 500 crore number outside of Gurkha. Um, so, a, a, that's, the, that's the view uh, on that. So, that, therefore, I don't know the exact numbers of uh, Amara, but we are not factored in... Uh, that kind of number from there yet. Uh, and, and the thing is, you know, there are projects which underperform, that projects uh, overperform during the year, uh, and those things will happen. So, you know, we build up overall buffer into the project. So, Amara might not do well, something else may not do so well, we might have a launch delay, we don't know what all can go wrong. In my experience in life, there has been only one law that is always applied, and that's been Murphy's law. Uh, so, you know, we are conservative in that front. Sure, sure, thank you. Just one follow up question regarding senior living. So, um, there are a lot of companies which are now focusing on senior living projects, uh, which will be there in the city as opposed to, let's suppose, in the outskirts. So, does your company specifically have an approach that uh, their projects are going to be on the outskirts, maybe for maybe cheaper land or rather, maybe greater ROEs as well? Or are you also planning to maybe uh, evaluate in city uh, projects for senior living where possibly you could get uh, higher premiums as opposed to outside. Maybe play in the uh, premium segment there. So, any plans there? So, we are looking to do more premium senior living. If you look at our senior living projects, they are a lot more premium today than they were uh, a few years ago. Uh, but we, we have a clear view that we have to do larger scale projects in senior living to create value. Uh, in terms of acreage, so we can leave open areas and amenities and deliver a different kind of a lifestyle. Uh, with that in mind, we are agnostic to uh, locations uh, as long as we think we can create value in that location. So uh, we are not ruling out anything, uh, but we have we have a we have a particular lens that we apply to evaluating projects, uh, and that lens remains effectively the same. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a line for the management reconnected, so please go ahead. Uh, apologies for the disconnections. Uh, there seems to be something long in, in some of the lines. We can't figure it out. Sorry, guys. Uh, go ahead, uh, please. Yeah, so 
Um, I'll just continue with my question. I think I'll just throw some more light so that there's better context. I was uh, saying that uh, when you say that developing projects which are near the city and then that if it's possible to have maybe take a hybrid approach where we have uh, maybe normal project and then two or three hours dedicated to senior living. So is Ashiana Amara Mara strategy uh, sorry Ashiana strategy only going to be specifically about about yeah, can you hear me? We don't think hybrid projects are the way to go. We don't uh, think they create the value uh, that a senior living consumer wants. Again, these are different opinions and different people can have different strategies. Uh, we want to do uh, a full senior living projects wherever we want to go. We don't, and so therefore our commitment to the sector is very different than just doing a, a two towers of senior living in a particular project. So we, we are not going to mix the two. Understood. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for cues and comments. We would like to thank all of you for being on this call and being so patient with all the questions and answers. If you were unable to take any questions, please feel free to write to us directly or reach out to us directly. And with that, we would like to conclude the call. A lot of the material we have spoken about is posted on our website. And you can also email your queries for any further clarification. Thank you once again for taking the time out to join us on this call. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Ash Ashiana Housing, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.